Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Today, it's another Lyman video. It's another race car. Today we have Fool's Gold. Matt Rice's 1974 Chevy Nova. That is now a big block Chevy Nova. It's got a 496 cubic inch big block Chevy M to the hood. And it's really, really not correct alignment wise. So, we're gonna get it fired up, get it pulled in the shop, get it on the alignment rack, and see what all we need to fix. Race car stuff. Race car alignment stuff, once again. If you're interested in this kind of thing, stay tuned. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, front end suspension wise, all kinds of not correct. It also has an issue with being able to push one way or another, so we're gonna have to fix that. It's definitely gonna be able to do wheelies, so we're definitely gonna be doing a bump steer kit on this thing as well. So, yeah, we're gonna fix everything, or at least try to. If you're interested, stay tuned. This should be a good one. Should be a pretty cool car. It's running Caltrax out back, but when they took it for their first test hit, they uh, they noticed that it kind of has a mind of its own. It wants to go left well, when it's putting the power down to the back wheels. So we're going to see if we can figure out why it's doing that, what we're going to do to fix it, and then uh, we're going to go over the car, see if there's any safety items we want to address. We'll let them know, and if they want us to do it, we will resolve them while it's here. I did notice when this thing uh, came in that the right front wheel is cambered in really far, so we're going to see if we can do something about that. It may have a bent knuckle, but looking at the body, one of the unique things about having a body like this, um, it's been sanded to kind of straighten it out. And uh, looks like it lived life as a gold car, basically, and then it got clear coated after it sat in the moisture for a little bit. Um, neat effect, but it helps me figure out the history of the car. Um, it appears to have all of its original panels, so this thing hasn't been bounced off a wall or T-boned by a car and then rebuilt, so I don't have to worry about the chassis being way out of whack. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get a car and you wonder why one of the corners is messed up, and then looking under it, you can see that panels have been welded in. It's like, oh, this car was hit. So that gives me a little more input into what I need to be looking for to straighten out the chassis, get the thrust line correct, and make them run straight down the road. So this spring perch is moving around. You can actually see witness marks where the bolts have been uh, moving or where the perch has been moving in relation to the bolts. So we're going to pull both of these perches out replace the J-clips and install some grade 8 hardware. This one's actually crooked too, so it must be cross-threaded. Or it's about to break. I don't know. We'll get it out of there. We'll check it out.
kind of looks like grade five. And it's not coming out. There go. So we will cut that one out. out. This one's going to stink. Probably hot. Got it. Alrighty. So we went over to Jags and picked up some J clips. That way we know we can get our rear spring pads locked down good and tight. Because with this spring moving forward and back in the car, it's gonna do weird things. Be unpredictable. So let's get those put in there. through my tire because that's the kind of luck I have. It probably wouldn't have made it out of the hole on its own, but I'd rather not risk it. Nothing like leaving stuff on the track that fell out of your car and then take somebody's tire out. <sighs> so that guy's in. Alright, my bolt goes half inch through my J nut, so I'm happy with that. I've got full thread contact on the J nut, so I don't have to worry about the bolts not being having enough load carrying capability. Um, that perch is locked down. I'm going to go ahead and get this one done, put my shock back on. And then we're gonna move over to the alignment rack and I'm gonna work on the bump steer kit. And this thing, when it was unloaded, I could see right off the bat that there's a camber issue on the passenger's front. We'll have to figure out what that is. That's either gonna be a bent subframe or a bent knuckle or coil springs installed wrong. These are all things that could possibly cause these issues. Um, but we'll have to figure out which component is bad and then we will have the solution and then we can move forward. Um, lots of little bits to make them work right. I'm going to reset these cow tracks because um, he's got this one's free and this one's loaded so I'm going to make them even after I make sure that my rear axle is square to the chassis which again I will do that on the alignment rack. Once I've done that I will actually put Loctite on all six of these bolts that hold the spring perches into the body that way I know they're not going to go anywhere. And then we'll keep doing whatever else we find that we need to address. But we're making small steps to make this thing safe on the track. That's a lot heavier than I 
thought it was going to be. I was not expecting that to be completely full of fuel. And that's what happens when you assume things. So we're about 40 pounds lighter on this car now. So that's a plus. That was dumb. Probably gonna end up loosening up the shackles in the rear a little bit, just to give them a little movement. Because they need to be tight, but they don't need to be super tight. Um, as I walk around the vehicle, I notice there are a couple lug nuts missing up front, one on each wheel, and then there's a lug nut and stud missing on the driver's rear, so we need to address those. Um, right now I'm going to stretch my back out after dropping a 50 gallon fuel, a 50 pound fuel tank on the floor. I think we'll adjust the brakes up a bit. Figure out why our brake adjuster isn't holding correctly. Clicker's not holding either. I'm not a huge fan of wheel spacers, but some sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Um, we'll have to make some adjustments to the brake components because the brake adjusters are not holding the star wheel adjuster where it needs to be. Um, but I don't have time to do that today, so we will address that another day. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and change these tires out, the rear slips for some new ones. And then I think I'm done on the back side of this car until we get a lug stud off for the driver's rear. And we get over on the alignment rack. So I'm going to take that tire, I'm going to unseat it off the wheel, I'm going to rotate it about 45 degrees and see if I can get a better overall balance on the tire. I've already done that to this tire, I'm going to rebalance it, see where it ends up, see if my balance improved, see if my road force improved. This one was at like a 60 road force and we're trying to do anything better than that. So we'll see. That's a lot better. This tire is grossly out of balance. It's a fake coated 20, so it's a 2020 tire. It's only about a year old, but you can see even for the small amount that this tire has been used from here to here, the tread is completely wasted. And from here to here, the tread is completely wasted. So that is a balance issue. This tire is gonna be bouncing when you're going up through speed so that could cause some weird stuff so we'll we'll see if they want to replace that tire the other tire feels pretty good um so i'm going over the car trying to find stuff that 
that I see that need to be addressed. Um, I'm not picking their car apart just to pick their car apart. The car is well on its way to becoming a, a cool street car. But this is something that has to be done. You have to be diligent. You have to be upfront and say, hey, I would address these items. I mean, it's it, the safer your car is, the more fun you're gonna have with it and the better it's gonna operate for you. So I've got the rear spring perches uh, locked down with new J clips and grade eight bolts. That should square up our rear end and have everything where it needs to be. Um, I'm gonna make a couple adjustments to the cow tracks once I get it back on the ground. But for the moment, I'm actually trying to figure out what I'm gonna do about this tire because the one tire is pretty messed up. One thing I am concerned with is at some point the center of the subframe was cut out and nothing was welded back into its place. So it's possible that that subframe could have sagged. Not likely, but it's possible. So we're, we'll figure out what we need to do with that. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some adjustments to the upper control arm. It has eight inch shims in it, so I can remove those to increase my camber on that side. But it's not gonna be the two degrees that I need to get out of it. Uh, so let's start with that. I also am gonna take the coils loose to make sure they're installed correctly because that could be part of my ride height problem. When I check this car on the alignment rack, it was a half inch off from side to side. It was low on the driver's side and high on the passenger side. So we want to see if we can resolve that issue as well. That spring terminates there. That coil needs to be rotated. So part of our ride height problem up front is the coils. Um, they are not the correct diameter. So they're not sitting into the pockets correctly. So this coil is actually hitting the frame in the front and then that coil is actually pitched back and hitting the frame on the back of the, of the frame pocket. Um, also the coil springs are indexed uh, incorrectly. The, the end point, the bottom of the coil, I don't know, coil in here. When you install a coil, that one's filthy. When you install a coil, the end of the coil goes into the pocket of the lower control arm and if you get it offset to a different point in the lower control arm, it can cause ride height issues. It can also cause popping, snapping noises from the suspension. So we're going to see what they want to do about coils. They need to be a larger diameter than this to sit correctly. That will give us proper ride height and proper spring pressures up front. That way, everything, when, 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 you, when your car rises and falls, you're getting even pressures. We, we want things, everything to be equal from side to side. So I adjusted this wire to have a little more tension on it. So now my star wheel adjuster engages correctly with the shoe so we'll put our drums back on should be good to go i got it too tight So I removed several shims on the passenger side to take my camber more towards positive. It was over two degrees negative camber when I checked it uh, a couple days ago. So uh, I'm gonna put this thing over on the alignment rack. We'll set the heads on, on the car for the aligner and see where we're at. 
set our baseline, put on our tie rod ends, and uh, our bump steer kit, the compressor. 